Go so, on, ball rolling. Go. We're talking about our culture as Christians. And we're talking about how we can express our culture. How we can live as our culture. Now the thing about a culture is that it emerges from our faith. It isn't our faith. So I want to be clear, whilst I encourage you to wear your cross with pride, it's not a sin if you don't. It's not a sin if you don't. It emerges from our faith. It isn't our faith. And it's the same with what I am about to talk about. It emerges from our faith. It is not our faith. But it is a way that we can live and express our culture. And it is the idea that as Christians, we should keep to a Christian calendar. Because a Christian calendar is a monument of our culture. It is the very decoration of time itself that as Christians, we live and mark time in a Christian way. It took time for the calendar to develop. There are many different Christian calendars in different lands, but everywhere that there are Christians, there is a Christian calendar. So keep to it, because marking your time as a Christian is important as an expression of your Christian culture. Right. The Christian calendar is a vehicle of communicating our doctrine because the Christian calendar marks things like the crucifixion of our Lord, the resurrection of our Lord, the coming of the Holy Spirit, the birth of our Lord, the communion of the saints. It marks the lives of the martyrs and those who died for the faith. It marks great Christian achievements, victories that we had against our enemies, like the celebration of the Battle of Lepento. So celebrating the Crusades is actually part of the Christian faith. It's part of the Christian calendar. Discovering the Holy Cross, the true cross, is part of the Christian calendar. It is the basis of a common Christian unity and purpose. When all Christians fast at Advent and fast at Lent, it gives us a common sense of our lives together as Christians because we have a shared experience. When Christians celebrate things together, it means that we have things to bind ourselves around. All time is big always. All time. Uncle, we pray for you. All time this man, I think this is the most coherent sentence that this guy has ever said in hundreds, in all the years he's been here. Allah, 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 Number one. And what? you, yes. Allah number one. Allah. Allah. Allah is a rat. Allah number one. Allah, Allah is a rat. And you, crazy a donkey, a wizard. No. Yahmar. <laughs> Guys, you. Answer. Try to focus you on me. Liar. Liar. No. Only la ilaha illallah. Except that he's not. Rasulullah. Yes. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay. We'll give the uncle his moment. God bless you. How many? How many? How uh, many? Uncle, how I'm going to pray for you. How many? Everybody God? pray for our uncle how here. How many? God to put on your We want to pray how many? that you have good health. We want to bless your family. You liar. We want to bless the you people liar. that you love. Stop we want to bless. We want to bless you. Allah. We want to bless you with wealth. We want to bless you with health. Thank you, yeah, donkey. We want to bless your family. We want to bless your Ahmad. children. We want to bless your grandchildren. Liar. Liar. We want to bless. We want to bless where you live and where you sleep, where you rise Allah, and where you eat. No, we bless Allah, our enemies. But the Muslims curse. The Muslims curse the Christians. You liar. No. So, so, moving on. Liar. The Christian calendar. Liar. The Christian calendar. Only number one. Is also is also is also a mechanism of discipleship it is a means by which christians can learn their faith 
It is a way Muhammad by which Allah. Christians can learn how to live as Christians. We can learn about our doctrines and our values. The Christian calendar is also a springboard and a platform for, to Christianize our lives and our families. Because by celebrating the Christian calendar, we form our faith and our lives in a Christian direction. It is something by which we can Christianize the ways that we live. Christians, the Christian calendar is a way for the Christians to be a distinctive people. Let me give you an example. Advent is coming soon. And what happens at Advent? Everybody has Christmas parties. They eat and they drink and they make merry as if it was Christmas. But Advent for the Christian is a time of fasting. So imagine you're invited to the Christian, the, the Christmas party and you go there and you don't eat. And they ask you, why aren't you celebrating? And you say, because it's Advent. And Advent is a time of prayer and fasting and reflection for the Christian. We celebrate Christmas between the 25th of December and something like the 2nd or the 11th of February. That's the celebration of Christmas. A 40-day celebration when we don't fast. No, as Christians, we should use the calendar to create our culture, to build our identity and to demand space in this multicultural world that the secularists respect our way of life as Christians, which means that we don't work on Sundays, which means that we fast at Advent and Lent, that we fast on a regular basis, that we celebrate Christ's resurrection, Christ's crucifixion, Christ's birth, the coming of the Holy Spirit, the communion of saints. Whether you believe that's just of the living or of the living on those who are in glory. Now the brother says that Christians don't agree upon the calendar. And he's absolutely right, they don't. So let me say this. Whatever calendar you use, whether Coptic or Orthodox or Catholic, celebrate it. Celebrate it. Celebrate the festivals. And if you encounter a Christian who has a different calendar from you, don't be shy to celebrate with them. It's just more celebration. And that can't be a bad thing. God knows we need more joy in this world. But what do we say about the Julian calendar and the Gregorian calendar? So the Julian calendar and the Gregorian calendar emerged because of a, a way of interpreting the, the statement that was given at the Council of Nicaea about how we date Easter. The Julian calendar is off by a few seconds. And every year, those few seconds accumulate. And, the num and that's why we have leap years where we add an extra day to the calendar to reconcile the fact that the way that we measure time is inaccurate to how the Earth goes around the Sun. And in the 60, I think it was in the 16th century or the 17th century, Pope Gregorius introduced reforms that moved the calendar, I think, by 12 or 14 days. Which meant that the Julian calendar and the Gregorian calendar were out by a 14 or uh, approximately about that many days, maybe 11. Which is why Orthodox Christians celebrate Christmas and Easter later than Gregorian Christians, Western Christians. However, I would appeal to those who follow the Justinian calendar 
that by accepting a correction to the calendar, you're only agreeing with God more. Because the issue is about the Earth's rotation around the Sun. And so surely it makes sense that our calendars are as accurate to the timing that God has given in the universe, not Julius Caesar. The leap year of one in every three, as is practiced by the Julian calendar, is too many. It's why your calendar is off. So giving and accepting a correction is no slight upon you because you're only agreeing with God. Christmas in the East and West could then be celebrated together. Now, I just want to talk about a little bit of the history. The calendar emerged from the desire to commemorate the Easter celebration. It was done weekly by Christians. If you look at Acts chapter 20, verse 7, it talks about Christians coming together and celebrating the Lord's Day, which is why we Christians celebrate Jesus on a Sunday, even though the Jews were the first Christians and they celebrated the Sabbath. Now, Justin Martyr was, to fir was the first to mention an annual feast, a yearly feast, of Easter. The dates were important enough to be contentious amongst Christians and the debate was settled at the Council of Nicaea. The apostolic constitutions talk of the primary nature of the Easter feast and of the fast preceding the Easter feast. And it is from this celebration of Easter that the entire Christian calendar emerges because we fix all our celebrations around Easter. Other movable feasts were attached and connected to the Easter feast such as Pentecost and Ascension Day as witnessed by the Church Father Isubius. Now the Council of Nicaea canonized the maxim that the fe East, the Feaster, uh, sorry, the Easter feast was to be celebrated on the first full moon after the spring equinox. So sometime between the 22nd of March and the 25th of April. Now, the feast of the Epiphany which is the celebration, which was or to become the celebration of the birth of our Lord, was first mentioned by the Church Father Hippolytus of Rome and also Clement of Alexandria. And he mentions that Christians were celebrating the birth of Christ on the Epiphany that was also at that time celebrating the baptism of Christ because both the birth of Christ and the baptism of Christ are the epiphanies of Jesus's identity. They are the revelation of who Jesus is and what he came to do. So Christians celebrate these things as the uh, revealing of Christ's identity. It became fixed by Christians as a way of Christianizing the Roman Empire, of giving the Roman citizens something to celebrate in the time of the winter solstice, the winter celebration. But it was independent of those celebrations. And there is evidence to suggest that pagans actually tried to copy the Christians in celebrating on the 25th of December. And at this time, up until the Gregorian reform, all Christians were celebrating Christmas at the same time. But because of the inaccuracies of the Julian calendar, 
the festival started falling out of sync with the seasons because the calendar, the Julian calendar, was inaccurate to actual astronomy and that's why it needed a reform established by Pope Gregorius. So, Christian, furthermore, the birthdays of the saints, now hear what I just said, the birthdays of the saints were commemorations of their martyrdoms. So when a Christian died or was martyred, that was celebrated as their birthdays. Christians used to wear white at the martyrdom commemorations. When we buried our dead, we used to wear white. It wasn't until the Black Death and the plague so devastated the European population that we Christians adopted white, sorry, black, because there was just so much death in the world. But those days are gone and it's time to wear white again, especially when we are burying a martyr. Let's celebrate the martyr's death. Let's celebrate those who die for the faith. And these commemorations of the martyrs became feast days. It's where we get the idea of celebrating birthdays from. Again, through the prism of the plague, we started to celebrate new life more because there were so many people dying. But in the past, life was gruesome, sharp, hard and ugly. And so Christians celebrated the better life that the saint went to rather than the birth of life. And we celebrated and remembered these births by imitation, by uh, an inversion of the genith, genith, sorry, I'm trying to say Greek here, genethlios of the pagans that celebrated births. We celebrated the martyrs like they celebrated births, as mentioned by Saint Polycarp. These martyrologiums, these commemorations of the saints became integrated into the Christian calendar. And then, as the red martyrdoms disappeared and made way for the white martyrdoms, i.e. The, the sacrifice of one's living life to Jesus, we began to celebrate the lives of those great saints of old who demonstrated great holiness. And I want to say, whether you believe in the intercession of saints or not, is irrelevant to the idea that you can celebrate the lives of great saintly men. Why can't we celebrate the life of Billy Graham every year? Why can't we? He was a great man who did great work for the church. So let's remember his life every year that we remember he died and has gone to glory. Why can't we remember the life of Ravi Zacharias and celebrate his life? Why can't we remember the life of Nabil Qureshi and celebrate his life? You don't have to believe that he can pray for you in heaven, but you can still celebrate his life on earth. So celebrate a Christian calendar. And I'll be talking more about how Christians who are committed to the anti-jihad movement and who are committed to opposing Islamic domination, persecution and dimitude can have a calendar celebrating all the saints who did exactly that on another talk. Yeah, go on, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, everyone. Bob, he's happy there. <laughs>